Hello and welcome everyone to Tadpool Tales Devlog, a 2D hand-drawn shoot'em up game about a tadpole cleaning rivers and fighting pollution. I hope you are all well and healthy, let's begin. First off, we got a new animated background. Before it used to be pretty static, only with some parallax effect, and you can see that now it looks much better and more alive. We've added an extra flower layer to the background, as well as the shines on the water, and the water is wavy. Next up, we've polished the big fish beam attack. We have increased the anticipation of the attack to give a bigger warning to the player that the beam is about to attack, and also took out the shadow. We have also changed the color of the small fish bullet into purple to match the big fish beam, and I think it looks a lot better. All the enemy's bullets now have an explosion animation. There are two types of explosions that are based on the size of the bullet. We have also added one of our boss, the cannon's cannon attack bullet, to rotate, which was something we wanted to add a long time ago. And we have also polished the duck cannon's death animation. If you remember from our previous devlog, we decided to add this log as an intermission between the bosses, to give somewhat a breathing time for the player to chill for a few seconds. Now there are also tiny tadpoles and frogos on top of the lock, depending on how far you get. On a more technical side, last week I ran into a problem with building the game. For some reason, the sprites are blending and glitching with one another through the animator. And this only happened after the build. I asked a lot of people in the community for help and it seems that it was not a common bug. Thankfully, Lawrence aka ExpressUnity stepped in and debugged the game with me. And apparently I was using the old version of Unity that did not have a proper render pipeline. So Lawrence got me to switch to the new version, the universal render pipeline, and uses a compression upon building the game. Now it seems that it solved the problem, and it also made the game a lot smaller. The game used to be 4 GB after the build, and now it's only 600 MB. Giacomo and I were super relieved when we saw the size of our game. I don't think anybody would download Tadpole Tales for 4 GB, and I was really worried when I found that out. But yes, once again, thank you Lawrence, and also thank you Gonzako for helping me out. Check Lawrence's YouTube channel out, he's a great programmer and makes great tutorials. Gonzako has always been a helpful friend on our Discord server and helped out so many of us throughout this year. Both of their links are in the description below. Finally, I have an exciting announcement to make. We have a new member, Tomer. He's a sound designer and a composer that is specialized in video games. He's also proficient in programming, which will help us to create and master all kinds of sounds for Tadpole Tales using FMOD. I'm super excited to work with him and we think that he will be a great asset for our game. He will take everything that I have and also what Sebastian made, put together and improve the sound. Last week for the first time I released the first playable version of the game and you guys were so great at giving valuable feedback as well as reporting bugs. I want to thank you all so much for the support and I cannot wait for the Tetra Tales to be released on Steam as well as on Itch. Thank you guys so much again for the love and support. Giacomo and I are very humbled by it. I hope you guys enjoyed this month's devlog. Like if you liked it, sub if you loved it. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to get in touch, as well as see the daily updates on Tadpole Tales. And with that being said, I wish you all a nice day and stay safe.